Okay, nice. Looks like it's working. Okay, we'll give everyone just a few more minutes to hop on here and then we will get started. Hope everyone's having a great Friday. Make sure you get some water ready and we'll get into it. Okay, let's get into it. So for this workout, make sure you have a water bottle ready. Make sure you have either a towel or a jacket, something you can roll up and pull apart. We're gonna need that for later in the workout. Come on, excuse me, one second. You'll want some space on the wall. And that should be about it. So let's get into the warm up. So we'll start on all fours here. So again, we're starting on all fours. And we're just going to work some cat cows. Just kind of getting the spine moving, getting the spine mobilized. Okay, now from here, you'll go back into that neutral spine position, so that's right in between all the way lowered and all the way flexed, all the way extended. So you'll find that nice position right in between those two and then drop back onto your heels and walk the hands back. Now when the hands are back like this, what I want you to do is point the chest toward the ceiling. You should feel that a little more in your mid back. This is really good for all those postural muscles that get overworked when you sit too long. And you're just thinking like someone has a string and they're pulling the chest toward the ceiling. This should feel pretty good. A little bit of extension in, in the mid-back. Really good for it. 
Good, just about four or five more. Now, if you have a hard time finding this position, one thing you can do is drop the chin all the way to the chest, and then go the exact opposite direction, drop the chin all the way to the chest, pushing the ground away from you, and then go the exact opposite direction. We'll do more of these in the cool down because I really like this one for helping to rehab some of those posture muscles that get overworked when you're sitting for too long. Okay, next one. Let's go right into all fours again, and we're just going to work some hip circles. These are called fire hydrants. Good, just about 10 on each side. Now, doing these, you don't want the hips to open up like this. You wanna keep them nice and square toward the floor. Again, that, that belt buckle is pointing right toward the floor. Good, just getting some nice hip circles in, getting the hip nice and loose, nice and warm. Good, we'll switch sides. We'll do that one more time on each side. Again, everything stays square toward the floor. The only thing that's moving is the hip. And if you're just joining us, make sure you have a water bottle. Make sure you have a little bit of space on the wall. And make sure you have either a towel or a jacket, something you can hold uh, at about arm's distance, probably about four, three or four feet apart. Okay. And then we're coming to the wall. We're just going to get some leg swings in here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Friday. We're just going back and forth with these guys, just opening up the hip, getting everything nice and loose. We're going to be doing some squats. We're going to be doing some lunges and some push-ups. So this workout's kind of cool. It's going to be a combination of some of the bigger movements. So we're gonna do squats, we're gonna do squat variations, we're gonna do lunge variations, we're gonna do push-up variations, we're gonna do a pull variation, and then we'll do a little bit of jumping for a little bit of cardio. But this is gonna be a, a, a really good workout. It'll take you right into the weekend. You're really good. Okay, and then we're switching sides, so we're going side to side with the legs here. Good, and switch sides. Okay, good, now, standing against the wall just like this, hands, feet are off the wall, uh, probably about four to five feet away, and you're just gonna pick up one side, drop it down, pick up the other, drop it down. So, just kinda like we're running in place. Now when you do this, think like you're driving with this back foot forward. So you're driving with that back foot forward. Try not to overextend at the back. You don't want to irritate the low back at all. So everything stays nice and tight. The ribs stay over the pelvis. Okay. And while we're on the wall, I'm just gonna move this guy over a little bit. Let's get the calves worked out. So let's go left foot forward, right foot's back. And all I want you to do is just walk this foot around kind of from nine to three o'clock as you bend this back knee. So we're working different parts of the calf. We're stretching, mobilizing different parts of the calf, getting it ready for different positions the foot will be in during our workout. The more you prepare your body for movements, and this is for workouts, but this is also throughout the day, the better prepared the body is, the more resilient it is to injuries, the more it can prepare for what's coming. So it's very preventative for injuries to prepare the body well. It's not the movement that hurts us, it's the movement the body is not prepared for. Switch feet if you haven't yet.
Okay, and still against the wall here, we're gonna hop on, do some of our squats. So feet a little more than shoulder width, hands are here. We're gonna be pretty close to the wall, so a little less than a foot, and you're just going down into a squat. And again. A few more of those. Okay, good. Now, from here, we're gonna get some soft padding for the knee. We're gonna go into a lunge position, but instead of going forward with this foot, we're gonna go out to the side. So we're here and we're just kicking that hip back and coming forward. This will help stretch the inside of the leg. Good, we'll just do about eight to 10 on each side. Good, and switch sides. Again, as we're doing these, these warm-ups, it's a good idea to make a mental note if there's any areas that feel tight or that are bothering you, because in the cool down, we're gonna do some stretches, and maybe even after that, you pick a few areas of the body and just really get those worked out if they were feeling a little tight during the warm-up or the workout. Always good to address those before they become a problem. Okay, and then we will stand up, move this guy out of the way, and we're just gonna do some rotations here. We'll just do some rotations. So about five going each way, really focusing more on the mid-back than the low back. Woo, get a little tight. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna hop into a push-up position. That can be either on your knees or on your toes, whatever's comfortable for you. And we're gonna go hips nice and low, but not so low that you're sagging at the low back. You want that core engaged as you do this. And what we're gonna do, nice stable base of support, we just wanna do some shoulder taps. Now again, if you need to do this on your knees, that's perfectly fine. Do it up on my toes. Just getting the core, getting the shoulders nice and warm. And with this, again, you don't want to be opening the chest and the hips as you do this. Everything stays square to the ground. Good, just a few more on each side. And relax, okay. Grab a little bit of water, and we're going to start getting into the workout. Everyone's feeling nice and warm again. Make sure you have water ready. Make sure you have either a towel or a jacket, something you can hold on to, and a little bit of space on the wall. That'll be more for the cool down, though. Okay, with the workout again, what we're doing is we're going to do, this is a squat, pull, lunge, push, jump workout. So our first movement's going to be a squat. It's going to be a goblet style squat. So what you want to do is grab, if you have something heavy like a bottle that you can fill with water, if you have a backpack, anything you can hold right here that's a little bit of weight. It doesn't have to be anything crazy because at the end of the day, really all we want is that feedback right here because that helps to engage the core. So I'll be using a kettlebell. I might use two kettlebells because I'm feeling, feeling so I'll say today. And that's you just go down, 
and then back up. So this one, you want to be able to engage the core through the whole time. So that whole movement, you should feel the core working. Okay, our next one, after that is we'll go to the ground. I have a jacket here. Probably a little more ideal to have a towel, but whatever you have. And you're gonna put that kind of overhead here. You'll go onto the ground. Make sure you have enough room in front of you. You'll go up and pull down. Up and pull down. Now, with this one, it's important that you're not overarching through the low back because you don't want to you don't want to hurt your low back. So with this, you want to think more like you're pulling the mid back up as this comes forward. So the mid back goes up as it comes forward, not the whole low back. So make sure you're being careful when you're doing that one. Really good exercise for the lats. Our next one, we'll come back standing and we'll do reverse lunges. So back, reverse lunge, reverse lunge. And again, all of these are going to be performed for 40 seconds. We're going to do three sets of it. After the reverse lunge, we're going to come back. We're just going to do some standard push-ups. Again, you can do these on your knees. You can do them on your toes. Whatever's comfortable. And then finally, we're going to close it out with some more jumping rope. I got a lot of good feedback. A lot of people like doing the jump rope. Even if you don't have a jump rope, I don't have a jump rope. Just to do it in place. So that one's good. It's our last one. That one will get the heart rate going a little higher. And that'll be good to close everything out. So, that being said, I'll get the timer going and we'll get into it. Hope everyone's ready. This one's gonna be this one's gonna be a good one. Okay, again, 40 seconds on each movement. Starting with our squat, so grab whatever you're using for that. 40 seconds. I'm going to use two kettlebells and get going right now. Okay, so I have my kettlebells here. You might be using something that you're just holding in one hand. Again, whatever you can sustain for 40 seconds. Now when you get to the bottom of the squat, it's especially important that you keep the core tight. Really good way to do that is as you go down, breathe in, and as you come up, breathe out through first lips. Good, that's 40 quarter seconds there. So make sure you're keeping the core tight throughout that whole movement. Okay, next we're going to our pull downs. So again, make sure you have something to grab with both hands, either a towel or a jacket. And we're moving. So again, making sure not to arch too much through the back. Oh, lost my timer. Good, just about 20 seconds left. And rest. Okay, from there, we're going to our reverse lunges. Now, if you felt pretty good holding something on the squats, go ahead and give that a try on the reverse lunges. Try for six to eight on each side. And we're going. So here, you want to shift the weight back onto the heel as you go. So this front foot, I have most of the weight on my heel, but that doesn't mean my toes are off the ground. So we're biasing the weight toward the heel, but we're still keeping the whole foot on the ground. Good. 
15 seconds. And rest. Okay, after our lunges, we're going right into our push ups. Do a rest about another nine seconds or so. And push ups, we're going for 40 seconds. And go. Again, fine. If it's on your toes, that's fine. If it's on your knees, that's fine. Again, find a pace that you can sustain for 40 seconds. If you want to do them hand release, that's okay too. Good, just about 10 more seconds. Good, five more seconds. And rest. Woo, nice work. Okay, then finally, we're gonna go into our jumping in place. About oh, 10 more seconds. So, just like your jumping rope, even though we don't have a rope, we're gonna pretend we do. We're going back to that. Two, one, and we're jumping. So, this should be a pretty good pace. It should challenge you. In the last 10 seconds, we're gonna increase the pace. Remember, land on the balls of your feet. You don't wanna put it on the toes too much. Okay, coming up in the last 10 seconds, we'll increase the pace, go. And rest. Woo. Nice work. So we'll take about a minute and a half rest, and then we'll come right back into it. Grab some water. If you need to modify any of those movements, please feel free. Again, it's whatever you can sustain for 40 seconds. So we want longevity through the workout. So we want to do it so it's challenging, but not so challenging that we can't do it for 40 seconds. So find what that is. It takes a little playing around with, which is why I like going through this three times. So you kind of get to your limits and you kind of find your baselines. Good, we'll take another 30 seconds, 30, 40 seconds, and then we'll keep moving. Okay, so remember we're starting back on that goblet squat style movement. And that can be anything you have in your house that puts a little bit of weight into the hands. Water bottle, backpack, whatever you need. And we're going in three, two, and we're moving. We're here 40 seconds. We're keeping the core nice and tight. Keeping the knees out over the toes. We don't want our knees caving in. Keeping them nice over the toes. Nice strong position. Good, just about 15 more seconds. Two, one, 
And go. Good, 10 more seconds. And rest. Woo! That was tough. Okay, now we're going back into our reverse lunges. And again, if you can, trying to hold something right in front of us as we do it. rep, keeping the core tight, keeping them nice on balance, landing the back knee softly on the ground. Good, 15 more seconds. Three, two, good. Okay, we're going back into our push ups. Again, these can be on the knees, they can be on the toes, they can be hand release. But we're going for 40 seconds. Three, two, and go. Five more seconds. Rest. Woo. Nice work. Okay, our last part of this, we're gonna be jumping rope. About 10 seconds. Again, let's get a good, pretty good pace going. In the last 10 seconds, we're gonna increase the pace. And go. So I have a pretty good pace. We're in the heart rate going, nothing too crazy, because the last 10 seconds, we're going to increase the pace. Increasing in three, two, one, good. As fast as you can. Five, four, three, two, rest. Woo! All right, that is set two. So we'll take about another minute and a half. We'll come back to it. We'll go into our last set. And then we're going to move into the cool down, which is going to involve a few really good postural exercises to train all those muscles that hold you upright. So rest, take another minute or so, and we'll keep going. seconds or so and then we'll move into it remember we're starting again back on those goblet squats for the cool down if you have a foam roller definitely grab that because we'll be using that a little bit as well
Okay, we're getting back to it. Just about three, two, one, and we're going. So we're going back on those goblet squats again. Again, shifting the weight back to the heels, keeping the core nice and tight throughout. Twenty seconds. Good. Ten seconds left. Woo. And rest. All right. We'll take a few more seconds, and then we'll move right into our cool down. Or I'm sorry, right into our next exercise. I'm ready for the cool down. We're almost there. One and five. We're doing our pull downs. Two, one, and we're going. Again, we're thinking more pulling with the mid back, and we're pulling this apart as we go down. Good, five more seconds. And rest. Okay, now we're going back into our lunges. Again, with the lunges, if you could grab something a little bit heavier, going in eight seconds to hold right in front of you. Switching sides in each step. And go. Again, shifting the weight back as we go. Just tapping the knee on the ground behind you. You don't want it to crash land. So again, we're just tapping like there's an eight back there that we don't want to break. Whew. Good, 10 more seconds. And rest. Nice. Okay, now we're going back into our push ups. Doing about five, five more seconds. And go. Ten seconds. Doing good. And rest. Ooh, mine are a little bit slower that time. I think I'm starting a little fatigue. All right, and then finally, we're going right. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Good, get ready to pick up the pace here soon. In three, two, and fast as you can. That can mean jumping higher, that can mean jumping faster, so either one of those will make it a little tougher. And rest. All right, woo! Nice work, everyone. Great work.
We'll move into our cool down in just about a minute and a half. Definitely walk around a little bit. Start pushing some air into the lungs. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Do some nose mouth breathing. We'll get back in about a minute for the cool down. Okay, so a little bit quicker than some of our other workouts have been, but these were definitely more intense movements. They were more taxing on the body, which is why we're only doing three sets. That workout was only about 17 or so minutes. So not anything long, but man, it was metabolic, meaning it was taxing on the system. So I would burn a lot of calories after that one. So it's not just the workout. With this type of workout, if we're not just burning calories in the workout, you're burning them for 24 hours after, so make sure you're refueling. The primary thing you want to refuel on, water. Because if you're sweating especially, dehydrating a lot, make sure you refill on the water. Secondly, get some high quality fat and high quality protein in the system after, after the workout. My recommendation would be don't do fat right after the workout. Do a couple carbs, something that's a little bit carby, and something with some good high quality protein in it. Reason being, fat takes a longer time. Let's just get in this first stretch first. So first, we're just gonna put the shoulders, hands right behind us, we're just gonna hang out right here, and just kinda go back and forth. So reason being, fat takes the longest out of all the nutrients to empty out of the stomach. Protein's the second longest, sugar will be the quickest. So if you want that protein to get into your system a little quicker, eat it with a little bit of carbs in it. It doesn't have to be anything like crazy high sugar carbs, but a little bit of oatmeal is okay. A little bit of chocolate milk if you're, if you're into it. And then we're gonna flip our hands over so that our palms are facing the ceiling. But again, the main thing being, you want more water much water as you can take it. It's been different for everyone. I don't have a blanket recommendation for that, but you hear a lot of around like eight glasses a day or however many ounces versus uh, compared to your body weight. Ideally, you're doing a little experimentation on yourself where you're looking at the color of your urine when you void. It should be close to clear. It means you're pretty hydrated. So make sure it's somewhere around that level would be ideal. Okay, after working the shoulders a little bit in this position, we're gonna go onto the back and what's this called the hook line position. So we're just right here. We're gonna go hands overhead. We're just gonna do a few deep breaths in. Now when you breathe in, in through the nose, the lower back flattens on the ground. Now when you breathe out, we're pushing the lower back even further onto the ground. So again, you're breathing in, and when I breathe in, the lower back flattens against the ground. Now when I breathe out, I'm pushing it even more into the ground. That's how you get that really deep core activation. So again, breathe in, lower back flattens on the ground, breathe out, deep core activation. Again, in, lower back's flat, even flatter, deeper core activation. Get a little shake through the core, that's good. All right, let's go hands overhead here. Now, if you have something heavy to hold in one hand here, like a heavy water bottle, that would be really good for this. I'm gonna grab a kettlebell, and what you're gonna do with the heavy object in your hand, you're just gonna hold it overhead, and I just want you to let the shoulder, here, I'll do it on this side if I see it a little bit better. I just want to let the shoulder sink down toward the ground that way. So I'm just going to let that shoulder, keeping the elbow straight, sink backwards. This is great, especially if you feel like you have really rounded shoulders. So if you feel like you sit at the desk a lot, your shoulders round forward, this takes it and literally pushes it the opposite direction. Good, you're not here, you're not up here, 
but you're straight on, the weight's going straight down and pushing the shoulder straight down toward the ground. Think about this as a ball and socket joint. We're taking that ball, we're pushing it deep into the socket. Just holding here another 10 or so seconds. And then let's get some turns into it. So just lightly turn that weight back and forth. This is a really good challenge for all your shoulder stabilizer muscles. This is really good for your shoulder stabilizers. And good, rest. Okay, I'll switch sides. So again, I'll do that on the side so that you can see me. So we're in that hook line position. Now, I'm here, it's as if I was gonna punch toward the ceiling and do the exact opposite direction. I'm just letting my shoulder sink straight down. It's just going straight down that way. We're just hanging out here for a little bit. Now, ideally, you have a decent amount of weight. Like, this is 22 pounds, which is, for me, a pretty, pretty good amount of weight for this exercise. So find something that you can stabilize in this position, but that still gives you that feedback, that push straight down. And then we'll just start turning it a little bit. Now, for those of you that feel like getting a little snapping, a little cracking in the joint, reset. Reset, push up, and let it fall straight back down, and then do that same movement. Just see if that changes anything. See if putting the shoulder joint, if getting that ball all the way into the socket changes things for that. I don't know if you can hear, but my shoulder, when I pull it out of that position, it tends to crack a little bit. Tend to get a little bit of rubbing there. Again, I'm just going to reset, let that shoulder joint drop straight down. Okay, good. Next, let's open up the hips a little bit on the foam roller. So grab a roller. If you don't have a roller, you can still do this. Um, maybe find like a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, something where you can put some pressure through the hips. Now you're gonna find that hip bone right up here. We're gonna go just below it, right to the top of the quadriceps tendon. So I'm gonna put that right on the edge of the roller. Elbows are here. My other knee is out supporting me this way. And I'm just looking for areas that feel a little bit tight, a little bit tense. Now if you get into an area you feel like any burning or like pulsating, you've gone a little too deep toward the groin and you've gotten into an area called the femoral triangle which is where your femoral artery femoral nerve that's where all that lives so you don't want to be compressing that so make sure you're not doing that when you do this not uh, not comfortable burning throbbing not good good and we're just kind of working along that quadriceps tendon And good, and we'll go a little bit further down the into the belly of the muscle. Kind of roll maybe a little bit outside, roll a little inside. Just figure out where it's feeling tight and get that nice and worked out. Now when you find a spot that feels less than good, we'll call it, add some movement. In. So we're going back and forth, bring the heel to the butt. Okay, good, and let's switch sides. So again, we're starting on that high quadriceps tendon just below that area called the, it's called the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. I'm gonna call it the hip bone for right now. We're gonna go right below that into the high quadriceps tendon. Again, not so far towards the groin that we're into that femoral triangle. I'm gonna leave that area alone. You, you'll know you're in it if you feel any throbbing or burning, so make sure you're not on that. You can kind of roll around back and forth, roll the leg back and forth just to figure out exactly 
how that's feeling, what's feeling tight, what areas might need a little bit of work. So one of these days, I'm not sure when, because I still have to talk to the boss about it, I'm going to bring my wife Carrie on this workout, and I'm going to have her do the modified versions of a lot of the movements we've been doing. So if you feel like some of them are maybe a little bit too tough or anything like that, she's going to be doing those other versions of it. Carrie, if you're watching, hopefully maybe you'll join us. Also, if you're watching, please, not please don't eat my leftovers from last night. I'd like to have this for lunch. Okay, good, and then let's go lower on that quadriceps tendon. And we're gonna find that area that feels a little bit tight, a little bit tense, and we're just gonna work that out. And again, feel free to play with some of the rotation there. Just don't tweak the back or anything like that. Okay, good. And then finally, we're going on to the chest here. Hands are gonna be straight out to the side. Leg goes here, we're rolling straight over. Hold them just for a few seconds. And relax. And good, hold just for a few seconds. Good, back over. So again, if the arm out, we're opening up the chest. Opposite leg is trying to get as far as you can that way comfortably. We don't want to tweak anything. And the other side. Leg comes here and over. Now, if you feel like a tight spot, you're getting an area that's feeling a little bit tight, add some breathing into that. So maybe just hold on to that tight area for a little bit and just breathe into it. See if you can't breathe some of that tightness out of the tissue. A lot of times, now when you're breathing and you're stretching and you have an area that's really tight and you breathe a little bit, breathing is like your body's feedback that this is a safe position. So as your brain starts to get that feedback, from the breathing, it will start to downregulate some of that muscle tension, start to ease some of that muscle tension because it recognizes this as a safe position. There's no need to guard the muscle. So kind of work into that a little bit. Very good to do, especially if you're feeling some areas that are a little bit tight. Okay, and then last one here, we're gonna come on to all fours. So from here, what you're gonna do, we're gonna be working for me, my left side, so I'm gonna bring my right leg back and over just a little bit, and I'm just gonna slide to the left. Now from here, I just wanna push my knee into the ground and get a little bit of a contraction, and then relax. A little bit of contraction, and then relax. Try I'm feeling a little bit of tightness in the groin. Now when I feel that tightness, I'm just going to contract, breathe, and then relax. Now when I say contract, that can be different for everyone. I'm contracting the quad, the glute. I'm almost like pushing my knee into the ground when I contract. If your contraction is more like you're pushing, you're trying to push the foot into the ground, whatever the case, just get a good contraction through all the muscles there and just try to work into that position. As I do that, I start to release some of that tension in the groin, and I'm able to go a little bit further. So contracting, holding just for a few seconds, and then relax. Okay, good, and come on back, and let's do the other side. So this time I'm going back with the left foot and over, and I'm just kind of resting it there. And then I'm gonna slide, 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 over. And then I'm gonna try and dip back. And then I'm gonna push my knee into the ground, and then I'm going to relax a little bit further. Good, and then push the knee into the ground, 
and then relax a little bit further. And then push, and then relax. Much further on this side. So I need, so that's my body telling me I need to do a little bit more work on the left side. So when this is over, I'll probably be going back to that, working a few different stretches. Okay, now from here, let's go right leg forward, and then I just want you to push back and get a little hamstring stretch here. And again, forward, and then back, get a little hamstring stretch. Good, switch sides. Okay, definitely make sure you get some water after this. I'd also recommend going for a nice long walk. Beautiful day out. And then get some fuel in the system because we will be back here on Monday. I hope everyone has a great weekend. If you need anything, please feel free to comment, email, I'm here. I'll be doing a few more stretches, but we'll be back here Monday at 10 o'clock again. If that changes, I'll definitely post on the Facebook page to let you know what time. Um, but yeah, get some water, get some walking in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.